Hey, baby. Stick to comedy, bro. How you doing? <laughs> All right, Kamis, you got questions ready for our guests? That's a yes, or maybe? Um, I'm going I'm to I'm make them up as long as I go. <laughs> I'll right, take what I can get. Maybe you want to preview that with me right, right now? <laughs> oh, I just do like the occasional, what made you do comedy and stuff like that. And then follow up questions based on what they said. Okay, now well, our speaker does not do comedy, he's an actor, right? So, actors oh. do all different types of So, he's known for this comedic role, but he's, he'll also talk about that. So, what? All right, so. Okay. Well, did he get in the comedy first? Well, that's what we can Before. ask. That's a good question. That's a good question. All right. We'll uh we'll make sure we get to that. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. What's going on, Dwayne? Yeah. There we All right. Rome, you still at work or what? No. I mean, I am, but not your job. <laughs> All right. You can keep your mask on. Talking. I don't want to expose you any further. <laughs> All right. Well, look. Um, I want to make sure that we are. I want to make sure that we're efficient with our time as possible. Welcome, 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 everyone. All right. Uh, I want to take a moment before we welcome our guests. Um, talk, start talking to them. I want to make sure we go over uh, one of the scripts that you guys did send. All right. Um, this one was sent by Deja. All right. I know we talk wrong, but I, but Deja, I the wall. You catch the Blueprint that we built. So I want to make sure All right. She's got her camera. All right. So first up, yeah. right. I believe we are. Yeah. All right. This one was written by Deja. All right. It's entitled "Water Waves." Can y'all see that? Mm -hmm. Thumbs up. You can see my screen. Mm -hmm. All right. Deja Hammonds. All right. Now, she would put her identifying information on there also so nobody can steal the stuff or at least could return it to her. All right. Uh, let me go ahead and start. Can I get somebody? It looks like we have uh, two characters. Can I get one of y'all to read for one character? Uh, Luna and Riley. All right, you can see the little description here in the top. Okay. I am about to volunteer somebody. Let's go to Jerome and uh, Camise. All right. Who playing who? You be Luna and Jerome, you be Riley. All right. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to do this little 
opening part here. All right. It says, the scene name is called uh, Let's Hit the Waves. All right. Fade in. The description as far as the setting says two best friends decide to go to the beach for some quality time together. Luna, the sarcastic leopard, loves her best friend but won't go anywhere near the water because she's too proper to admit she's scared of the water. Riley, the friendly, fun elephant. Oh, these are animals. Okay. Right. All important. Right. Um, encourages Luna to give it a try. All right. Uh, you don't just, you don't, hold on. Let me reset that. That was the mess. All right. You can take a moment. I'm going to go ahead and give a little 30 second count. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, don't you just love being in the shade away from the water? Lena, I know that you're afraid of the... I'm not afraid of the water. Okay. I see we hit the waves. Yeah. All right, Luna. Luna cuts off Riley, yelling at her. Luna. No, thanks. I sit here. Chill for a minute. You go ahead. Okay, I think we skipped around someplace. Um, Riley felt, I think you skipped from up here. Oh, we did Harry that. Moving. We already did that. Oh, my bad. Okay, so we're down here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we already did. Right. Riley felt disappointed, but that did not stop her. The waves started to rise up with sparkling beauty to it. Riley was surf her way to life until the waves got too big to handle and she couldn't handle uh, she screams out for her Luna. Luna, help. <laughs> oh, God. Luna <laughs> heard someone calling her name until she turns around. Uh, she ran to the water so fast until she stopped with fright, scrolling down her body. Riley calling out for Luna, and Luna is too scared to go in the water. What's going to happen next? All right, and that's I it. don't know what's going right. to happen next. Right, we're going to stop it right there. We're going to stop it right there. All right. And so let's look that she used animals. Yeah, yeah I, I saw like, it was uh, people. Yeah, it's imaginative. I like how she brought, it, brought that in. It's a different point of view. Yeah, that's dope. Mm -hmm. That's dope. I wish she was actually on here so I could tell her that to her face. Yeah, she probably sleep. <laughs> She sleep. One of y'all got a number, text her. If you got the other one's numbers, go ahead and text them. I don't have nobody number in this. I get it. Yeah, yeah, I don't I don't talk. I don't have friends. I don't, don't talk have people. to You don't have to explain it all the time. Okay. You know, like That's people. great. We get it. That's great. We get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. So um with no further ado, uh, I wanted to go ahead and get into our uh lesson today. All right. We have a guest speaker today. Um, Y'all, please give it up for Mr. Sean Harrison. <laughs> uh, thank you. So um, I guess that's my time to, to get started with you guys. Um, first, uh, I just want to thank you guys for having me and being receptive to me being here. Um, if you guys don't know, I am an actor. Um, I'm known for being on a show called Family Matters. Uh, and I played the character Waldo Geraldo Faldo. Uh, the show is most popularized by a character uh, by the name of Steve Urkel. So um, if you guys are curious as to why I'm here today, uh, bear with me. I had to write notes because I wanted to uh, present something to you guys or share something with you guys that I thought would be helpful. But I just briefly want to share my approach to comedic acting and give you an actor's perspective on that. And I'm hoping in the stuff that I share, uh, with you guys today, it will help you when it comes time to perform the comedy material that you guys have been working on. So uh, just a little bit of a background. Uh, uh, I've been acting for 40 years. Um, although I am known now sort of as being a comedic actor, there was a long stretch of time in the industry where I could not get a role where uh, comedy was in it. I did a lot of stuff that was more on the theatrical side that was drama. And uh, something changed for me. I went to this audition. I was probably around, I would say 14 at the time. And I kind of was focused, but not 
focused and I think I was loose enough that I just sort of let it all hang out and I went into the audition room and I just presented something that was somewhat what I had uh, rehearsed but not entirely uh, but it was just a more relaxed type of thing and in doing so I noticed all of the people in the room were, get, were laughing and my first takeaway was oh I'm stinking up the joint like this is the worst audition I've ever had in my life but come to find out hours later I ended up booking the role and in doing that part I was then put on the path of starting to understand certain things about comedy, which um, include things like timing and transitions and understanding beats and learning how to use your body, uh, the physical portion of comedy. And uh, it took a few more years of me auditioning and doing different things before uh, I just happened upon an audition for the television series Family Matters. And I showed up at that audition prepared to audition for another character. And that character was gonna be the bully character of the Urkel character. So I went into my audition, I presented my work and uh, I left. And I was really hopeful at that time that I would book the role because that, you know, during that season, um, the show was pretty popular. And as I was leaving and walking out, the casting director came out to me and said, hey, 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 Sean, uh, would it be possible for you to read another character? And I said, okay, sure. So I took about five minutes or so and I studied the material for uh, the character Waldo and I was having a hard time connecting with what it is I thought that they were wanting for the comedy, but um, I said, okay, let me just go in here and just sort of do a little something. And once again, in a similar vein as to the other job that I was telling you about, I was just kind of relaxed and I kind of threw away uh, a lot of what it is that I was doing. I, I, I had sort of an idea of what I wanted to do, but I just sort of, it's just very, loose with it. Went in the door, I presented uh, my audition and they laughed and I thought, okay, that's a good sign, but I still want the other part. Went home, ended up booking this particular role, Waldo. And um, as the story would have it, uh, it came on as a guest appearance. And it was funny enough that they invited the character back a few more times before they decided that they wanted me to be around a little bit more than just a couple of episodes. So um, that's just a little bit of what my backstory is in regards to my relationship with comedy. So right now, if you could play that Family Matters clip, um, so I want you guys to see my work, and then after you guys see the scene that um, I was in on the show, I'll talk about it just a little bit. Everyone can see my screen? Thumbs up. Cheese. Cool. 
<laughs> All right. All right. All right. So uh, the, the reason that I wanted to uh, share that You're a legend, with you, dude. You're a legend. <laughs> uh, please, stop, stop, stop. So the uh, reason that I wanted to uh, share yeah. that clip with you guys uh, is that <laughs> obviously, like where you guys started your class, you have stuff that's scripted. It's on the page. And it then requires you to fuse some uh, or breathe some life into what it is that you do. And in doing that, and how this relates to you guys doing stand-up comedy is that you guys are going to be storytellers and there are going to be times when you need to use your body, you need to use your voice, you need to use your face in order to emote or heighten the sense of comedy that you're trying to uh, project. Because at the end of the day, what you have that's written might be funny on the page, but just because you recite it doesn't mean that it's also funny. So if you can remember different pieces of the clip, there are little nuanced things that Reggie and I, Reggie plays Carl, um, added into the added into what it is that we were doing. So if you look at him, he's very like serious at what he did and kind of broad in the way that he reacted to certain things. And if you look at certain things that I did, my timing was always as if I didn't really know what he was talking about. So I would chime in different things pretty quickly and look very sort of serious like him, sort of matter of fact in that Waldo type of way. And those types of things added to the sense of comedy of the situation of it being ridiculous that I went from my house over to his house in the middle of the night to have food. Then you have other additional things that are fused into the, into what it is we do in particular, like when Reggie gets to the door and he's trying to usher me on the way out. It's not scripted that he's going to do this head movement, like, you know, get your tail out of here. But knowing that that's the kind of thing that sort of feeds the audience something for them to react off of, he did that type of thing. And it added to, I think, the comedy of the situation. Uh, so it's stuff like that, I think, that will be beneficial to you guys, at least I'm hoping and I'm praying, as you guys are working on your material, um, of how you can write it, which is a challenge in itself, but then think about how am I going to perform that particular thing. Um, as I stated, in doing so, when you're performing, what you want to try to do is, I think, note when something is supposed to be humorous to you. So if it's humorous to you, whether you've written it or, or you recognize you're reading somebody else's material and you believe it's humorous to them, that should be sort of an asterisk that you either mentally make to yourself or you write it on that page. Because that lets you know that when you start going back to map out the beats of what it is that you wanna perform, that there's something different that you might have to do with that thing. So notice how I went different and my inflection changed. That might be something that you have to do. Again, inflection, change of your voice. Maybe you speak more loudly. Maybe you, make, you speak softly. Maybe you speak quick, quicker than you typically do. These are the sort of the nuanced things that you wanna consider when you are preparing to perform your material. So uh, what I would like to do right now, if you guys don't mind, is I did an episode, I did a bit on um, a television show called uh, Dynasty, which is airing right now. And I wanna show you the sides, which is the material that they gave to me at the audition to read. And I wanna show you how I went through and I read the scene and I sort of had to figure out the different places in there that I needed to be mindful of, of exactly what I thought that they needed and what it is I thought that I was capable of fusing the things together uh, before I went into the audition. So hopefully this uh, this share screen situation will work. Hold on, let me give it to you. And where are you? Oop. There it goes. I can do it now? Shoot. All right, share. Yes. Do you see anything? Uh, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, you don't. Can you see that now? Yes, sir. Okay. So um, the only thing that they had given me, right, or me and every other actor that went into audition for this part, the only other, the only information that they had given us was that this guy was um, 40 years old and he was the owner of a gift shop in uh, New Orleans. Uh, um, and that's basically it. Now, me knowing that Dynasty, I don't know if any of you guys watched that show, it's um, what most of us is in the industry would call a little over the top and broad. So since I knew that that was the case, I then had to think about, well, what type of feel would they want for a guest performer on this show? Do they want something as broad as the regulars that appear on that show? Or do they want something that's a little more understated? 
So the characters you guys can see is this right here, Monsieur Renard. And so I had to read through the material. So I'll start at the top and I'll just sort of read through. What possessed us to come to this dump in the middle of the night? Oh, hi, Fallon Carrington, love your store. Oh, and I'm, I'm, I saw you guys reading scripts before, so you guys know the difference. So you know stuff up here, that right there is called your action part. So it gives you an indication of what's happening prior to it about to happen. And then as you know, you then have your character name and then the dialogue right there. And then it goes back, back and forth, back and forth. Okay, so anyway, I'll start at, I'll start at the top. So Fallon says, what possessed us to come into this dump in the middle of the night? Oh, hi, Fallon Carrington, love your store. Sam says, do you remember us from last night? Uh, you're a hard group to forget, except where's the fourth one? So a line like that, when I know that it's the first line that a character has to say, mm -hmm. I'm always torn because me as a comedic performer, I'm thinking, hmm, are they wanting this person to be funny from the top or do I just sort of establish it as a real person first and then I find another moment? So that's sort of a mental note for myself as I go through the material. Okay, next line. Um, the ride here didn't agree with her, so she's outside trying to hurl unsuccessfully. Uh, was there a man with us, most likely handsome, looked uh, like husband material? No, but you uh, talked about a wedding to someone named Scorpio. Okay, so that to me is a mental note for myself just because the ridiculous of somebody, ridiculousness of somebody uh, marrying someone named Scorpio. So in my mind, I'm thinking it's not a funny line, but I need to have a reaction to it that lets them know that I think that it's amusing that somebody is named Scorpio. So that's another mental note to myself. Scorpio, I'm here to guy. I married a guy with an astrological, astrological sign for a name. Oh, uh, your new name is Mrs. Scorpio. Um, I'm glad that's what you're focused on when we have nothing to go on. Uh, let me show you the surveillance footage. Maybe that'll help. Now this, I'm understanding as I'm reading this, um, is I'm trying to bait them to stay. So I gotta be friendly. So that's another mental note to myself. Uh, she has a phone. She says, sorry, unknown number, decline. They are watching surveillance footage that I'm now showing them. So this will make sense. They're sort of reacting to the footage that comes onto the screen that I'm showing them. Oh Lord, look at that shirt. Uh, you can delete this after you're done, right? So that's another mental note to myself. I recognize that the character is speaking to my character. So instead of just standing there stiffly, I then have to sort of be engaged enough to be able to respond. Um, character says, did I really buy pauses? They see, um, some more stuff happening on screen. And then the character says, did we? And then I come in with, rob my store last night? Yeah. So I know that this is now a shift in the character because he's been a certain way at the beginning, but now that he has baited them into staying long enough, he wants to let them know, you dummies did something that you didn't think that I remembered, but I got you. So that for me is another mental note to myself as I'm navigating through the scene of what it is that's required of me as the, as the character. So then the guy says, a baseball bat seems a bit extreme. Look, we can find our wallets and we'll pay for the, and she gets cut off by the cops coming into the door. So then I have my moment of victory. And so the character then has another sort of shift as he's excited by the fact that he has totally uh, hoodwinked these dudes. So I hit the silent alarm as soon as I saw you return. I'll take that back now. And your friend who's waiting outside, um, oh, and your friend is waiting outside the police car already. So that was basically the audition material that I had. And so it was then up to me, based on the stuff that I just highlighted to you guys, to go in there and make those mental notes, mental notes for myself, but then be able to perform those things um, when it came time for me to do my audition. So fortunately, I did a decent enough job that they ended up booking me for the role. So now what I would like um, to do is to play that scene for you guys just to see so you guys can see just some of the stuff that I told you I sort of had to map out in my mind and then how it came to be as far as being filmed. All right. Um, let me get my host privileges back from you. Okay. Give me two <laughs> seconds because I didn't did something here. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Okay. Now what do I got to do? to? Do, let me do also that? just say you're an excellent oh, reader. Sorry. Like this is like, <laughs> like to, I didn't recognize to act you have to be able to actually read and read yeah. well, smoothly, that, understand the context. <laughs> that's and a part it, of it. <laughs> I mean, it's a huge part of it. Wow. Um, okay. Now I got it back. Screen share. Uh, you ain't give it back yet. Uh, oh, it, I, I said stop share. What else do I have to do? Oh, uh, click on the three dots over my face and make me the host. Okay. Make you host. Change host. There you go. There we go. Okay. Bow. And bow. 
All right, everyone can see my screen. Give me a thumbs up. All right. All right. <laughs> it really just comes to life. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. So, I mean, I know that I went over the material kind of quickly, but I hope you guys were able to sort of see the stuff that I stopped at to highlight to you guys and how it sort of I infused that into my performance in such a way that hopefully it seems seamless, but there's thought put into that. It doesn't come um, instinctively. You have to, I think, give it some thought um, in order to sort of know that it's there so that you can sort of tap into it because as, as you probably have learned when you're performing you have so much stuff going through your mind and the stuff that you don't rehearse more than likely isn't gonna just materialize out of nowhere uh when you're performing so it's really important i believe to um, as I said, spend time, whether it's your own material or whether it's material that's pre been presented to you by someone else and really just understand what it is that um, the thing is about first. And then secondarily, once you go back through it, as I said, make bullet points mentally or on the page that you're working from about where you think those beats are, where you think those moments of comedy are, and if they're moments of comedy and humor, what thing can you add to that moment to bring out the comedy for you? Because what you find as a performer is no two people will perform the same thing the same way. Everyone has a different means of emphasis, if you will, when it comes to being humorous. Some people might use their eyes a lot to be expressive, and that's their form of humor. Some people might be extra dry and laid back, and then that's their source of humor. Um, some people might speak exceptionally with a high-pitched voice and speak very quickly. Some people might speak exceptionally slow. So there's all of these different things that you guys can employ, techniques that you can employ when you're performing your material to hopefully, again, infuse uh, and heighten the comedy of what it is that you think you've written. And you have to play with it. So I don't know if you guys do this, like, like rehearse yourself in a mirror or record yourself stuff on your phone. Um, it's very helpful to do that. I can tell you that as someone who's a seasoned professional, um, that I still do that because a lot of times what we think we're performing or emoting, we're not doing it. And it's not until you see it that you go, oh my God, like what the crap was I thinking? Like that doesn't connect with or match what it is I thought that I was trying to convey. So I think that that's, um, that's something that can be helpful for you guys. So the last portion that I will just sort of tap into is that, that um, um, I was given just sort of a brief overview of what it is that you guys have got, what you guys have been doing here. And so I just wanted to share with you that um, I think that this is a dope program that you guys are doing. So hopefully you guys are yeah, taking yeah, as yeah. much as you can and retaining as much as you can from this. <laughs> but just to share with you how uh, this skill that you're sort of tapping into as far as comedy writing goes um, can be helpful to you in regards to more than just being a stand-up comedy. I mean, stand-up comic. As we all know, many stand-up comics they enter into this wanting to branch out into other portions of the industry so that they can become um, comedic actors on sitcoms and do comedy films like um, a Kevin Hart, as you know, he did the circuit and then had a TV show and then he was blessed enough to start doing films and now he's a megastar. So obviously that's a very contemporary example of doing stuff like that. But in addition to being a performer and being in front of the camera, just know that the skill of comedy can also be beneficial to you if you ever wanna be a writer. Uh, you can do the same thing um, as far as writing for uh, comedy on TV or writing comedic films. Uh, TV can be a sitcom. TV can be writing for late night shows. Um, you might even be a ghostwriter for other stand-up comedians. So this is a really valuable thing that you guys are learning. So I want you guys to really give it your all in trying to, again, learn these exercises, perfect those exercises, and tailor them to yourself because you don't know where you this... Um, stuff may take you. Um, the last thing that I will say is that uh, when you get involved in the industry that it can lead to some really fun things that you can do. So for myself, one of the neat things that I was able to do was voice a character on an animated show called Legion of Superheroes. And 
um, that is totally a result of just being in the industry for such a long time and having people say, hey, you have an interesting enough voice. Have you ever considered um, doing X, Y, and Z? X, Y, and Z would be um, voiceover. And I said, mm, I don't know. So I took some um, classes for that. And um, while I was doing that, someone said, you know, have you ever, have you ever considered doing an animation because you have that background in acting and it comes into play there? And I said, mm, I don't know. But long story short, um, I really took to um, the prospect of doing animated work and auditioning for that kind of stuff. And um, although the clip I'm going to play for you guys is not on the comedic side, I just wanted to share with you again, just stuff that you can look forward to um, if you decide that this is a career path that you want to follow. And know that, of course, if you guys, I'm pretty sure, watch a lot of animation and a lot of anime, there is a lot of comedic stuff that comes into play with that. So without further ado, if you could play that last animation clip yeah. oh. and i'm playing timberwolf which is i think speaks for itself i'm not the <laughs> superman clone <laughs> all right everybody see my screen thumbs up Boom. you missed the service i can't believe he's gone i just can't believe he's actually gone hey we'll get through this together we're all taking the loss of Superman hard. Superman? I'm talking about Imperiax. I don't expect you to understand, but my life's only purpose was to destroy him. And now that that's been taken from me by someone else, I just feel so useless. Well, then I guess that's it, huh? You might as well just pack it in now. Never mind that Brainiac 5 is out there and we've got to. I've seen the future. Brainy wins. There's nothing we can do to stop him. You can try. Or are you gonna walk out on the Legion like a coward? How can I walk out on something I was never a part of? You may have Superman's DNA, but you sure don't have his spirit. He's alive. Who? Who's alive? Superman. I felt his presence in my mind. Cal, voices in your head? Not a good thing. I'm telling you, Superman's alive. If he were, wouldn't I have felt it? Not if he went into a state of suspended animation. So he could slow the kryptonite poisoning. He's barely holding on. I couldn't sense our link at first, but now I feel it strongly. Yes. Yes, I see him. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah. Let me tell you, I'm a comic book nerd of the... Really? highest order yeah like that is like that's my jam <laughs> <laughs> <You're Alita funny. laughs> Sarah, like, talking about the future brainiac five <laughs> yes that is all my that's all my stuff i've got like a wall of comic books oh uh, that's crazy a bookcase of them over here so yeah that's amazing to have the opportunity to uh to bring something like that to like you know, I, what are you yeah, like, it was. Boot, like just fighting the air, just like, in that no, 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 no. So, <laughs> so when we did the show, basically what happened is that we, we all were in a big ass uh, recording booth together. So sometimes it would be about, I would say like six to eight of us and we would have our scripts um, on, um, a, not a mic stand, a music stand. Mm -hmm. And we would just go through the script from top to bottom and we would read all of our lines and if there was any like technical issue they would you know stop us like hey can you reread that line or do it differently and then after we were done uh well the first season what happened is they would have us do random just to answer your question they would have us do random what they call efforts that's the uh, ah that's called efforts <laughs> so they would have us do that stuff while we were there but it didn't really match up so we would have to come back afterwards and when you would come back afterwards it's called adr so additional recording you come in and then that's when you're matching your uh your voice to the picture so when we first go into the booth it's just us reading and whatever and then they send the animation overseas to get um drawn and all that stuff then it comes back then they sync the picture with 
um, the audio. So then when you come back, as I said, for the ADR, it's already in sync. And so you're just perfecting certain little things. So the second season, since we had it down more to a science, we were able to do our efforts while we were recording and we pretty much could nail what it is that they wanted. So, you know, you're getting, you're getting, um, you're, 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 you're punching someone or you're receiving a blow or you're landing on something. Um, they would just, the description would be in the script and they would just have us just, you know, again, voice that effort and they would just have it there uh, for them as on a dummy track so that they could then sync it later on and make it work. And that's how we were able to do it. But no, you didn't necessarily punch the air unless <laughs> if something like that was requ required in order for you to sort of get the sound out. Like the guy who played <laughs> Superman, the guy who played <laughs> Superman for whatever reason, when he would do the character, he would he would stand like this when he would deliver yeah. his lines. And that yeah. seemed to be the way he could Bring channel out. and focus <laughs> what it is um, that he was trying to do with the character. So. <laughs> Exactly. You got it down. Okay. You got to have got it down. the posture. Probably, uh huh. Yeah. So whatever it takes. I mean, a good thing, you know, you are on camera, so you can do pretty much anything, as I said, to um, allow yourself to affect whatever emotion and voice sound that you want. Right. Um, yes. Rob, uh, Camille, Dwayne, uh, all y'all, I, I don't want to sit up here and take up all the time and not have y'all ask your questions and all. Um, Camille, oh, they had questions. Okay. Yeah, they had questions. I, don't, I didn't want to assume that there were questions. Oh yeah, uh, Camis. What was it that you were uh, going to ask? Did you have your question answered already? Um, I don't. I don't know. I think I need a little bit of clarification. Yes. My question okay. was: Did you, since you're a comedic actor, yes, did you start off with comedy, or you just jumped into the actor thing and tried to make things funny? No, I did not start off. So actually, um, I started at such a young age, I, I wouldn't have known what I wanted to do. I started when I was literally four years old. And so mm -hmm. it was over the course of time, as I go on enough auditions, uh, like anything in life, you do it enough times, you start to discover what your strength and your weaknesses are. And when I would get auditions, because you don't know, material and projects, it's written and it's presented to you. You don't know if it's going to be something very serious, something lighthearted, something kind of funny, whatever. Uh, what I discovered early on is that something that required the actor to be kind of funny and make other people laugh, I just... I, did, I didn't have it in me. I didn't know what to do with that material. But as I said, when I was about 15 or so, I went on an audition and I just was really loose because I wasn't thinking anything was going to come of it. And I went into the door and it was kind of a sarcastic character that I ended up playing. And that was closer to who I was as a person. Mm -hmm. And it was just sort of being able to act, just having that um, foundation of acting and then sort of infusing bits and pieces of myself. I was able to book that role. And when I booked that role, what happened is because when you do a sitcom episode, it takes five days. There's five days that build up. There's a lot of rehearsal time that goes into it. It sort of became one of my first training grounds for understanding um, certain things that I, throw, I threw out to you guys, like transitions, beats, um, knowing what's funny, what's not funny, knowing what to throw away, knowing what to sort of punch up. Um, in order to try to elicit some type of reaction, hopefully that being something on the uh, funny side. So no, I definitely did not start in acting. I mean, start with comedy. I didn't have any goal to do anything that was on the comedic side. It was just something that developed over time. And then I'll just add to that piece, even though I said this earlier, it was when I started to regularly appear on Family Matters. That really was awesome because it for sure was basically my comedy academy. So week in and week out, I'm with these veterans who have been doing it for such a long time and I'm able to watch and study what it is that they do. And then fortunately for me, the other actors on the show were closer to my age and those were those scenes were written with them. So I was able to perform with them and I'm vibing off of them, they're vibing off of me. And then one of the fantastic things about Family Matters is we had one director in particular and he was a child actor and for that reason, he was able to sort of look at the scene differently than some of our other directors. And he would know when to sort of help us along, like things that we didn't kind of know what to do with it. He would give us something. So whether it was a nudge and how we delivered the line, whether it was um, on, the, on the physical side of things, like I want you to perform this action while you're doing this particular thing. 
it so in him doing that it was another piece of the puzzle for me in understanding all of these different elements that you can sort of as i said earlier tap into to sort of heighten and punch up what it is that you're trying to do on uh the comedic side and then uh what you discover is over time you figure out what your thing is so when i was on the show for that period of time i knew what it is that the writers expected of me so i was able to perform the character in a certain type of way i also had a pretty close idea of what the audience was going to vibe with in regards to certain lines that i was going to say and how i was going to deliver those lines and so that sort of um feedback that you're getting uh, especially when we performed in front of a live audience was very beneficial for me in uh shaping how i understand uh comedy so hopefully i that addressed um, everything that you wanted, but if there's something more specific in, than that, just you know, reframe the question or ask me another question, and I'll you know do, do my best. Did you, you answer it? Okay. All right, um, Rome. All right, so the other day, right? <laughs> you know, I was just watching a movie, you know, mm -hmm. and the movie was The Five Bloods. You probably know what I'm talking about. It's on Netflix. Oh, The Five Bloods, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So I was watching the movie, and I was like. Dave, the, the character David came into the movie. And when the character David came into the movie, you know, he, I kind of connected with him. Okay. Right? I was like, it's kind of like something I could do, right? Okay. So when I looked at it, I was like, okay, let me see what school he went to, what school he went to for acting, right? Mm -hmm. So it turns out that he went to the Yale School for Acting. Okay. Right, and my question is, does your credibility, credibility stand, like, if you went to a higher school, mm -hmm. like, how does that help you? Um, I, I'm going to answer your, your question like this. Everyone's path to whatever level of success that they achieve in this industry is entirely different. Just know that. So, for instance, I got involved... Um, in the industry, as I shared with you guys, at such an early age, of course, I'm not going to have a, a collegiate level a acting school that I'm going to have as sort of a credential for me to say, hey, I'm worthy of your time for you to see me for this role. Um, whereas someone like the actor who portrayed the David character, he does have something like that. So what I'd like to say is never assume that you have to go to a very high profile acting school or academy in order to um, be perceived as a legitimate talent in the industry. Because as I said, everybody comes from a different path. You might discover, and I'm pretty sure there's some out there, I don't have an example to, to share with you guys, that there are some people who are successful in this industry and they've probably never taken an acting class. They've sort of learned by the school of hard knocks, meaning that they've learned on the job. So whether that's booking a commercial, booking something on a television series, booking a film, and they become sponges and they take in any and everything that they can. Additionally, if they get established in the industry, instead of going to something like uh, a Yale acting school, which is out of college, when you get to LA and New York, Chicago, all of these hot beds of, of uh, entertainment, you'll have plenty of acting courses, workshops and stuff that you can tap into. And so more than likely after a while, someone was like, hey, you know, you might want to check into such and such workshop and they go and they start to prepare or take a class with that um, instructor. And that's another form of just sort of building on what it is that you're capable of doing. Because as I said before, what we find is that we have strengths and we have some weaknesses and more than likely you're there to um, sure up your strengths and then um, fine tune what your, um, I said sure up your weaknesses, I meant, sorry, <laughs> and fine tune your strengths. So no, it's not something that you have to do. Uh, you will find that a, a lot of people do come from that background and you will find that people react favorably to that. Like, oh, wow, they went to Juilliard. Oh, wow, they went to Yale. Oh, wow. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you happen to talk to somebody, a bunch of people that's on a production, not everybody comes from that. If I'm performing next to that dude, I don't have that as my credential. I'm like, no, I, I did this X, Y, and Z. So never think that you're less than because of the school that you went to. If there's any reason to think that you might be less than, it's because you're not performing up to mm -hmm. the ability of that other actor. And what you would want to do is say, okay, maybe in this moment, I'm not quite living up to what it is that I'm capable of, but I'm gonna use this um, 
as a learning lesson and I'm going to improve. And so if that improvement comes from doing it yourself and finding some stuff and being just more focused on what it is and how you're performing or getting yourself into some workshops, then that's how you go about doing it. Hmm. That's a excellent <laughs> good answer. <laughs> good question. Man. Good question. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, with, are there any other questions? I know one big thing with Upward Bound, um, the program that Jerome's a part of, is uh, that they they encourage people to go to college. You know? and I, so I can always yeah. tell you when it when it comes to college and education that uh, yeah. I think you did go to a performing arts like high school, uh, correct? No. I did not. I did okay, not. Okay, well, I thought it was something. <laughs> no, no, no. So, yeah, he I got in go it before he got into high actual school. school. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. But let me say this: I am a big, um, I'm a, I'm a big advocate for education as well. Yeah. Um, I went to school and got my degree in psychology. Um, hey, so I graduated great. from UCLA. So I encourage all of you guys: if you want to go to school go to school for sure. Um, and if this is something that you're also interested in and you want to make that a part of your um, collegiate careers, um, yeah. then I would say do that as well. Um, you don't have to do one or the other. I think that you can do both. I think a lot of times people encourage you to do one or the other, but yeah. know that there's a pos it's possible to do both at the same time. I it may be challenging, but if you have a passion for um, something that's entertainment related, you can make it work. Yeah, look at uh, Donald Glover, All right? So while he's in college and in high school, he's doing YouTube stuff with a group yeah. called Comedy, right? Yeah. And then that propels him into uh, writing roles with 30 Rock, and he meets Tina Fey, mm -hmm. who puts him mm -hmm. on all the NBC stuff and gets him into community. Yep. And then that mm -hmm. expands out from there. He's also, at the same time, doing music. Right. <laughs> so he's pretty, See, that's what I'm saying. Like, everybody has a different path. Have, yeah, you can do it. And he went to like a really, uh, I think he went to like Columbia or NYU, one of those schools for like film. So like he's he's made connections and he's working. Uh -huh. And that's what yeah. it is. If you're working hard and you're meeting people, making connections, things will uh, come together for you. But work hard, for real. Yeah. I, I always encourage people, don't just jump into it because someone said, oh, you're funny. Um, someone said that you're pretty. Someone said, like, I always say that people say, oh, how do I get in the business? I'm like, well, what can you do? Right. And then after they answer what they can do, I always say, um, I encourage them, go get some training because the worst thing that can happen to you is um, you believing that you're really funny or you're really a great um, dramatic actor and an opportunity presents itself and you fall on your face because you really aren't prepared for that opportunity. So regardless of if you go to college to study acting or if you do it like others, which is, as I say, you have these independent workshops that have nothing to do with school, yeah. um, get some training if it's something that you're curious about doing in the industry. It is going to be so beneficial to you. Um, just like this stuff, this program that I told you guys are in, retain this stuff. Uh, it may not seem like you've mastered it at this moment. It may not seem like it makes all of the sense right now, but I promise you at some point in the future, it is going to click in and you're going to be like, oh my God, thank God I had that as a foundation for myself. Definitely. Um, Dwayne, Rob, Dwayne, uh, question? Um, I guess I can say a question about like, um, I don't want to force nothing. No, don't make. Yeah, it. yeah, you don't have to force it. <laughs> I, was, I was just asking. So, like, if you having like a not the best day, but you had to like do a set or like get on stage or mm -hmm. something, how would you like manage that? Like, how would you maintain to keep your best energy? Good. Ooh, well, you know what? I, I think that that is a. I think that that's way. Let me turn my volume back down. Uh, I think that that's a really. Um, that's a good question because what you. The reality is we're never always feeling our best emotionally mm -hmm. or physically when it comes time to perform for me. And I can only speak for myself. Everybody is different because I've been in the industry for such a long time. There's this thing that we call professionalism. So what we kind of, there's a coin phrase of turning it on and turning it off. So I'm going to deal with whatever, whatever my issues may be up until a certain point. So if I've had a really bad day that's been caused by some grief, by some person, um, something that uh, some 
business situation I got to work out. I'm going to, you know, think about it. I'm going to dwell on it for a certain period of time. And then I'm going to tell myself, and I'm just, you know, I have to force myself, discipline myself to do this. Okay. I no longer have the ability to think about this at this particular time. I can pick this up afterwards, after I'm done with this particular thing. And then I shift. I immediately then start to either get into the preparatory uh, portion of what it is that I need to do. Or if let's just say I've been called to set, then I know that it's time for me to turn it on and be prepared to deliver what it is that I'm there to do. So I would say the straightforward answer is you have to discipline your mind and you have to discipline your behaviors sometimes because having bad days and how you react to them are unavoidable. Mm -hmm. But you do have to talk yourself into saying, I have to put this down for X amount of time because realistically, most likely you say like a set or something like that, you're only gonna be dedicating to your creative endeavors probably about an hour or so of your time. You then have another 23 hours to be consumed with whatever your foolishness is. So, so you have to kind of tell yourself certain things, do the mathematics, like I got time to be creative right now. And then I still got time to just be, you know, pissed off or down in the dumps about whatever that thing is. So um, that's the best way that I can tell you to approach it. That's what I did. Um, I had situations where stuff actually did happen to me. I mean, heavy stuff. And I had to suck it up, you know, look myself in the mirror and be like, okay, it's time to perform and walk onto the set. And when they say action, I got to perform and I have to be believable enough that nobody uh, whether it's somebody on the crew, maybe somebody that's in the cast, will know that I might be really feeling something different than what it is that I'm conveying. But that's just a part of the job. That's a part of being professional. Um, so again, it's discipline. You just have to do it. That, that's, that is amazing also. Uh, good question too, man. Yeah, that was a fantastic question. <laughs> Can I ask you a quick question? Um, so uh, staying on that vein that Dwayne was in, um, I was just looking at um, the movie Dirty Dancing because my grandmother watches it all the time. Um, and, I, and I realized that Patrick Swayze, the guy and the actress, yeah. they actually did not get along at all. Uh -huh. they, they, hmm. You would never know on the set that they actually did because they played love scenes and all this yes. stuff, but they hated each other's guts on the yes. set. Okay. So, Sean, have you ever had that situation where you had to even play acting with the person who you were acting with that you were Oh, you for? better believe it. <laughs> yes, I mean, that's why it's called acting. <laughs> you get to pretend. So I've, I mean, I've literally had situations where I'm playing someone's cool friend and we vibe and blah, 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 you know, right, right after they said action, when they say cut, I go this way, they go that way, and we will not say a word. But I promise you, if you look at the work, you would think that we are the best of damn friends. But that's what, you know, that's what you're supposed to do. And that's an extension of some of the other thing, like even the discipline of being able to turn off um, when you're having a bad day. It's called professionalism. And that's something that actually I was going to talk to you guys about in closing. Professionalism. Professionalism requires you to be prepared for what it is that you're there to do. Uh, so that means that you want to prepare prior to arriving. Professionalism is how you conduct yourself when you're there in any environment. So if it's an audition, being professional to show up on time, being professional to know your lines, being professional to ask the right questions, be professional to respect the space that you're in when you're on a set, respect the other actors that you're dealing with, respect the time of the production itself. So arrive on time, be somebody that's easy to work with. These are sort of the things that fit in the framework of being professional. And I encourage you guys to embrace that because you'll hear these horror stories about how people are difficult to work with that's unprofessional it's very uh, it's challenging to be around uh trust me um any little blow up or flare up on the set everybody knows um it affects everybody from top to bottom and you don't want to be a part of that um but it's very important i feel to again know what entail what professionalism entails and to again sort of enact that whenever you are somewhere so for me in this particular scenario answering your question will um, when i was having difficulties with an actor i considered it to be professional that nobody was the wiser that me and this performer didn't get along so i made sure that although i described to you guys like we ah, and then mm, but they never saw the uh in me. It was just more like, oh, you know, you just mosey on this direction and they mosey on that direction. I showed up on time. I never exchanged words with the person out in the open um, because I wanted to be professional and I did not want to uh, change the night.
dynamic of the chemistry of everyone else that's involved in a production because in case you guys didn't know and i've assumed by now you guys do know there are so many people that are involved in a production that are behind the cameras you know about the people in front of the camera but behind the cameras and, and, and as i said that energy it affects everybody and you don't want to be the cause of that um can i just one more, can i do one more follow-up uh real quick karagu um just you know uh growing up on the set of Family Matters. And I know that when I was out there, there was um, a situation where um, there were actors who didn't remember their lines. There were actors who um, required the, the entire cast to stay longer because they had to film longer. So what happens after the designated time or eight hour time period, it not only costs you, but it can cost the entire set. So speaking to your point yes. that your decisions not to be repaired impacts everybody. And it also can cost physical cost actually. So I know that happened on the set at Family Matters a few times where it could cost a, a lot of money because people, whatever situation was happening. Yeah, and there's, there's always a situation that arises, but there's an expression in the industry that says time is money. That's sort of what he's speaking to. That's what we say, time is money. So you, you wanna show up on time. Um, as I said, you wanna be prepared because when people are uh, when they are actually filming, you don't want to go over your allotted time, or at least the production doesn't, because once the production goes over schedule, they then go into what's called overtime, and that costs the studio um, an exorbitant amount of money, because it's then what's called time and a half, and that's from everybody. That's the actors, that's the crew members, and they don't want to do that, and they don't want it to happen consistently. If it happens here and there, and it's unavoidable, for instance, some of the episodes, if you guys have ever seen them, where they had like basketball scenes, that crap would take a long time. We had a couple of directors that they were so enthusiastic to have something kind of different to do that week that they would get this set up and that set up and this and that, and they would go over production schedule. Well, that was from the director's point of view. So it's much easier for them. They can fuss at them. They're going to be annoyed with it. But when it comes from the actors extending production time, they might grin in your face but they're making a note about that and they are not happy. And if it happens consistently, someone's gonna pull you to a side, pull you to side to the side, sorry, and have words with you, or I would say worst case scenario, which isn't that terrible, they'll have a meeting, basically like a staff meeting and be like, listen, we have a couple of things that we need to address. And those are the kind of things that you don't want to happen. I mean, they happen in reality, but you don't really want those things to happen. Yes, you do not want to become the topic of conversation in a negative way. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and I'm gonna cop. I had, I can tell you guys, I had <laughs> one very unprofessional moment on Thank set you. one time where I was so, and I'm be, I'm, a, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bare my soul here, where I was so irritated with one of our directors, and I'm saying, I literally, I literally cussed his ass out <laughs> on set because he was being so obnoxious to me in that moment, and it was a learning. It was a lesson for me because as I've stated to you, all of the stuff that I'm stressing to you, I don't, I didn't want to be that person. So I, I don't want to say I overreacted, but I reacted in a way that wasn't required in that moment because I did it in front of everybody. And luckily it was just before lunch. So they called lunch. <laughs> we went our separate ways. Just after lunch came back, I went and did something with some of the other cast members and then i pulled the director aside and we cleared the air but it's unprofessional um regardless of who caused it and if you cause your, you know call yourself responding to certain things speaking of which because you know as black people sometimes we bring some of our culture in the stuff you're like you're not gonna talk to me in a certain type of way <laughs> even stuff like that you have to learn how to deal with um conflict differently when you get in the industry yeah. fyi Right. <laughs> Definitely can't can't be scrapping in there. How old were you when you were <laughs> in in the role and had this kind of uh, incident also? Oh, and when that incident happened, I want to say that I was about I think I was like 19. Like, y'all. So that's like where y'all are. You know, that's where y'all are. We get that's how you feel sometimes. You know, it's like, oh, really? I'm gonna tell you what's up. I don't, it doesn't always happen. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling you, I went there. I went there for a good couple of minutes yeah. with, with that dude. And I felt very justified in that moment. You know how we, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then afterwards I was like, okay, maybe I, I, I shouldn't yeah. have done that. That's, so that's very you know, it happens very though. Um, I, wanted, I wanted to wrap up, but uh, Robert, yeah. and, um, Robert, did you have uh, anything that you wanted to add? I think I see a head no. He like, hell no. Rob, he half sleep. I must come over there. 
<laughs> no, I don't have any questions. All right, you can't have a pillow behind you. At least use a virtual screensaver so I can't <laughs> see that you are half naked in the bed, bro. Come on, yeah. Sure. <laughs> all right, um, Eric, I know you came in, came in later and all, but you actually were very interested in uh, the acting aspect and all. So I wanted to make sure I gave you opportunity to, you know, say your part on all. Did you have any question uh, for Harrison in regards to acting, technique, or? Kind of a sec, because I'm, I'm just getting home. I slept with my cousins out, so I didn't. I probably got some stuff ready to ask. Uh, I'm not sure what I really got to ask. Um, I'm, I do like acting, though. You're definitely one of my favorite actors. I'm not even gonna lie. Thank you. Uh, I absolutely love Family Man. That's like that's like a great kind of show for real, too. I kind of wish like you could still get like family sitcoms like that still, mm -hmm. but it's fine though. It's still like good to have that look back on. But yeah. I'm I'm someone in the acting myself. I'm more a little more in the voice acting, but mm, I'm okay. I, I'm also in like acts like reality acting too. Okay. Yeah. And well, uh, I thank you for and I appreciate, you know, um you saying that you like the show and like my acting on the show. I appreciate that. But, but I will say this, if a question comes to you, I don't know if you'll be able to watch back what it is that um we talked about today, but if you watch it back and something that you have wasn't addressed that you might have a question, send it over and I'll do my best to try to answer that question for you. Okay. Since you came in late. Thank you. Yeah, right. No problem. And thank you uh, for your graciousness, man, today. Um, no, as I said, thank you guys for uh, having me and uh, being attentive uh, to this. I hope that I have shared some things with you guys that uh, will be helpful to you. As I said, when you guys start yeah. taking the stuff that you're working on writing and then starting to breathe life into the performance of that stuff. So um, yes. I, I, I sincerely pray that something that I've shared will stick with you. I, I'm, I feel changed just sitting here and, and hearing it myself, man. Um, I want to thank you too, William uh, and B City, um, for uh, for backing this and for putting this together. Um, it's uh, uh, I wanted to know if you had any other projects that you were working on or things that were coming out. Uh, that you wanted to make um. I don't have anything that's getting ready to come out um, at the moment, but I am definitely working towards some stuff. Um, I always like to speak stuff. I've gotten into that age in my life. I've got to try to speak stuff into existence. So I'm looking towards directing now. So there's a project that I'm trying to help usher forward so that I can uh, helm it as the director. So um, it's kind of that's what I'm doing uh, currently. In addition to still auditioning for stuff and still wanting to perform because uh, I was you know, in doing that dynasty clip that you guys were able to watch today, it sort of reminded me that I'm capable. And sometimes, you know, in the industry, you kind of forget that you're capable of doing this, that, and the other. So uh, I do want to direct, but I still want to perform from time to time. So that's that's yeah. it. Yeah. Thanks, Sean, for coming on and um, doing yeah. this. Um, and uh, it, it's it's been amazing just be listening in. But um, thanks thanks a lot. I think it made it a difference being here and I'm um, sharing your knowledge. And the great questions from every everybody yeah. engagement was really really good too. So I wish you all the luck. Um, Thank when you. I first came on to this, the uh, uh, um, I was like I was really impressed with everybody. Um, and so I talked to Karagu and I said, you know, I want to reach out to Sean because I talked to Sean a lot. Um, I've known him for a long time, so I thought that what he does could play. Oh, uh, and Michelle's already started her PowerPoint. A significant role in uh, what you all are doing. What's that? We'll keep in touch too. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna log out so that you guys can do y'all wrap up without me being here and all up in y'all <laughs> business and in your mix. But thanks again for having me, and hopefully I will see you guys soon in the future. All right, man, you're a paragon of art. <laughs> Thank you. All right, bye guys. All right, all right, kids. Um, did y'all enjoy yourselves here? Yeah, I just yeah. told my brother. I just told my brother. I was like. It's Waldo. though. He yeah, knows. I'm about to stop so. bragging. I'm about to stop bragging. Yeah, it's kind of it's very cool, and that's like a part of like television history, Black history. You know, all of those things. Like that. That is the uh, one of the most significant shows probably in the last you know 20, 30 years. Uh, so yeah, it's amazing to have been a part of that as a young person, and then to have all that perspective. It's like, yeah. Um, <laughs> 
and I, and y'all questions. Like I, I big you up on that. Good job on them questions. I wish you would have wrote your scripts like you wrote them questions. All right. You know, one of the, one of the things to my boot is when you have friends in Hollywood, which I I grew up in Hollywood. I grew up around um, um, a lot of stars, different stars. Um, and grew up on the set of Family Matters. So hanging out with Sean in the dressing room, being with Darius and um, all of the actors there. And my little sister, um, my, my, um, I call her my little sister, but Kelly Williams, we grew up together in acting uh, when we were kids. And so when she got the part, um, I used to always visit Laura. California yeah. and just visit all of the sets and all of the folks. And one of the things I found is that if you're in that space and you have that connections, you're there. And it's really one big advantage that you have. So. Um, it gave me an opportunity to actually be on Family Matters a few times as well, just as sort How are you of cameo. You never yeah, well, that. Well, I, I have a, a childhood acting career, but that's kind of how I got involved with that, all of this. Um, so um, just being prepared and putting yourself in the situation and being in the space like you are right now is how you get to where you need to be. You've got to be in the mix. So great job, Karagu and everybody on the call. I'm really impressed. Yeah, yeah. Good job, gang. Gang, gang. <laughs> Look, I know we're in overtime. I appreciate your time, Eric. I appreciate you coming on in like the last seconds, sliding in under the door <laughs> before it closed. He's like, ah. Yeah, you got your question in, Eric. Good job on that. That's perseverance, man. All right. <laughs> I, I, I do appreciate the efforts. All right. Um, y'all, y'all have a good, um, good time. God bless. Good night. Be, stay amazing. Um, work on those scripts. If you didn't already, do, send them to me. You, you, you. <laughs> All right, y'all. Peace.